Hey guys, how's it going? My wife and I, are, we're out cruising around yard sailing. And it's towards the end of the day, it was like three or four o'clock in the evening. And I went by, we're going down a little back road, saw this yard sale, and they were kind of cleaning stuff up, putting stuff away. In the corner was this bike. I'm like, oh, what's up with that? And of course, I'm into that. So I hopped out of the truck, ran over. Hey, what are you looking to get for the bike? He says, you know what? Take it for 10 bucks. I'll, uh, we're closing up. We just kind of want to get rid of stuff. And then, sure. <laughs> so I grabbed that for the 10 bucks, and then he started telling me a little bit of backstory. It was his. He got it new, I think, as a Christmas present. I want to say he said like 1970-ish. I'm not quite sure. Um, and, you know, we started swapping stories back and forth. Again, this is probably about two months ago. And so it's been sitting. Anyway, it has to be before 19, I think, 75 because they got rid of that shifter. After that, too many kids were uh, hitting stuff and sliding off and crashing their uh, their junk. <laughs> so, anyway, let's... um. It needs a bunch of love and to be gone through and everything. I figured it'd be a good thing to make a video of me. We'll tell a couple of stories and whatnot. So let's go get her up. I got a little bike rack we can hang it off of and just start going through it and try to resuscitate it. And uh, again, maybe tell some stories. All right, let's go. That should work a little bit better for us. So back then, you know, muscle cars were coming out and bikes kind of went from the 50 style bikes, which were like a 26 inch single speed style bikes to trying to copy off of the muscle car thing that was going on at the time and that would kind of explain you know that's supposed to look like i guess uh side pipes got red line tires were on cars i want to say that might have been red line at one point maybe it may have faded i see like a a tinge of red in them this this one's a three speed banana seat sissy bar They definitely dropped it down on the left side. <laughs> There's supposed to be a way, should be a number on it somewhere. We can probably ID it a little bit better. I don't know if that's on top of the paint or under the paint. It feels like it's on top, like some kind of sticker was there. I believe it looks like it's, it might even be like original tires that are on it. Definitely worn down. It looks like it had what would have that been? Maybe like a speedometer or something? A little clip that was on there? These are all falling off, huh? Remember these? <laughs> like little straws that you would put on your spokes. Looks like it's missing the cable setup for the front. And it does definitely looks pretty much original. Original grip setter on it. Fenders look pretty decent. Let's spin the rims, see how dented up they are. That one looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of a, a wobble to it. Try and not look at the tire. I want the back one. The back one's the one that really got its ass kicked from doing jumps. Yeah. She doesn't look too bad. Spokes are real sloppy. All of them, you know, they're all loose. It's got the little reflector in the back. I think the idea of that was just to keep the dirt out of the inside of the wheel. Original slick on it. Looks like it's kicking out the uh, the liner for the tube. Looks like it's got what's left of the original plastic guards on. Those are like the first thing that got lost on our bikes, and on there too. I don't know about you know what does and doesn't work. We're going to kind of go through anything, anything and everything anyway. Kick starts sloppy. I did already order a set of tubes for it. And I got a uh, chain to replace this one just in case this one's crap. That one seems all right. That one seems all right. And I don't know if we're gonna go keep it the same or if we're gonna go screw with it and maybe uh, we'll change it up a little bit. As long as we keep everything without, you know, Taking a cutting wheel to it, she would just put everything back. That looks like a sticker says something, huh? What does that say? 1970, maybe? Maybe it was a like a registration sticker that used to go here. Now no longer. Might have had a bike lock or something wrapped around here too, and it kind of wore some of the paint down. Let's um. What do you want to start with first? I mean, we'll get the wheels off of it. We'll start going through making the wheels decent. We'll see what we have. I don't know if we put tubes in them, if they're gonna to stay together or not. I'd like to leave the original ones on there. It looks like the back tire 
one of the brake shoes. <laughs> See where the brake shoe is? Not exactly where it's supposed to be. And it's like it was wearing into the tire. Yeah, look at the here. It's all kind of cut into it. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to save that or not. Let's get, uh, we can let's go start with the front wheel. We'll pop that off of there. We'll see how the bearings are and, oh, the spokes on the front one. Kind of sloppy too. Maybe we'll go through them. We'll try to screw the rims up, throw some tubes on them, throw some air in those tires and see what we get. Yeah, I think on these you gotta take the, yeah, we're gonna be able to, these need to see it now. I think on these you have to take the uh, nuts all the way off to, to clear the bars for the fender supports. It's not even tight. Let's go find out. Yeah. So I looked at the number. And I looked up quickly. I think it said the very first number is going to be the last year of it. And this one has an eight. So it's going to be like 58, 68, 78, something like that. The whole thing's turned. Um, and like I said, it couldn't be 78 because that shifter wouldn't be right. So 68 is when this bike was made. Maybe you got it in 69 around there. I was born in 64. And I couldn't say I had any new bicycles for a while. <laughs> I can tell you a story on that. Let's um, go over to bench, go pop that tire off of there. Fun thing. The dullest screwdriver I got. <laughs> hey, these are really crispy. So, kind of like every my, every kid my age, when you know, when you were a preteen before you had your driver's license, you got a bike, man. That was like freedom. <laughs> and I remember one Christmas. Bugging my parents for a bike, bugging them, bugging them. And, uh, you know, this, uh, I want to say the, the date I'm talking about was probably like early 70s. I was probably 8, 10 years old. So I mean, like 73, 74. These bikes were really popular. And I came down to Christmas. There's a, a shiny new bike. And it was a. 26 inch Columbia single speed. <laughs> it's what my parents probably would have wanted underneath their Christmas tree, but I wanted a muscle bike. And I mean, I, I don't know if I cried, but like I felt real bad. I'm like, oh, that's not what I wanted. And you know, Santa, you let me down. And later on, I, I felt so bad. But uh, <laughs> funny part is now is that's the kind of bike I, I, would, I wanted. I, I, now that that's the kind of bike I want, I should say. And I, I built a couple like uh, engine powered bikes out of those, like the Schwins and all, the 50s, 26 inch bikes. And those are pretty much dust. Yeah, I feel bad. Still feel bad. <laughs> what do you think that was for? Like, like maybe a speedometer or maybe a weight, maybe a balance, balance the wheel out. Let's go throw, let's go, actually, let's go pop the, rate, the bearings away. They're feeling kind of crunchy. I don't know if you. Doesn't look too bent. We've got to tighten those spokes up anyway. Let's go oh, back these off a little. See so if we can get the bearings out of them and then clean them out. I think we're going to need another. You know, we need another 916s. Because yeah, all my friends are running around with like Schwins and Ross Apollos and. Yeah, you kind of wanted to be. All your friends had muscle cars. You wanted a muscle car too, so to speak. Let's go see how this does. I'm amazed actually this one kind of lived because every boy, like, I have scars and all my friends had scars too for screwing around with you know, your bicycles and what you were doing. So this axle should be able to slide out one side. We should be able to take those bearings and kind of clean them up. Let's go get them out. Yeah, they're, they're dry or, you know, just that side of them. Let's go, uh, I'm going to go clean them up, throw a little bit of grease on them. 
this is the race also that's in there, that surface. And it definitely looks like they've been dried up. Let's go clean that up with a little bit of grease in there. We'll set this without the tire on it back on the bike. And I, I think I have a spoke adjuster. We'll go and uh, try to get rid of some of the bounciness that's in there and we'll try to true it up the best we can. And we'll throw a tube on it. And I don't know about the longevity of, <laughs> I hope the slick in the back lasts but we'll give it a shot. You know, they're, they're pretty much come crumbling up. What there is, there's a cable that runs around on each side of the tire that kind of holds the tire together. Yeah, it's not looking very good now, is it? Yeah, let's give it a shot. So yeah, the axle is able to clean up on a wire wheel, but this has got like some caked in grease in there. Yeah, so 68 would make it, what, 55 years old? Soon to be 56 years old. Just break up all that cruddy stuff that's in there. Yeah, so that was like your, your free capacity for... That was your capacity for freedom. And up to then, I don't remember, I can't recall any new bikes. Just that, again, that 26 inch. Columbia that we got. And that was, again, it was like a, a single speed. I think towards that time, like the, the stuff that was getting popular was like at 10 speeds were coming out. The muscle bikes are kind of going away and the 10 speeds, you, you got someplace fast. These, you got everywhere at like 10 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you had to kind of work for it because you're, you kind of sat and like, the pedals were out in front of you. So you, you stood up to try to get a little bit extra effort on them. Where was the two bearings where they end up? Let's goober them up. I should probably give them a little bath too, huh? Oh, the race needs to be cleaned. And a friend of mine, he, he always seemed like he got the new stuff <laughs> i'm not complaining at all but uh, i'm just saying he like they he would always have the um i think he started out with some kind of muscle but I, I i don't know if he had a schwinn or not i remember him and his sister did and of course you know the boys bikes always got beat up and the girls bikes they either never got used or they got used so little so i would have to go borrow his sister's bike <laughs> It's like about insult to injury, right? Hey, let's go for a bike ride. I ain't got nothing to ride. Uh, you can take my sister's bike. <laughs> and the sister's bike had the, um, the difference between a boy's and a girl's bike was the tube on the top would um, drop down on a girl's bike to like step over it. And then a boy's bike, it was like this one where it kind of goes across. Yeah, I think his sister's bike even had the basket on it. <laughs> you definitely don't want to be seen on one of those. So we started, um, uh, I, I want to say, I don't know if this was before or after I got the 26-inch um, the Columbia Red, you know, Pee Wee Herman's kind of dream bike. Let's go goober this up. We're going to throw some. This tub of grease here is probably worth more than a bike. Let's go give her a liberal amount of lube. So there was always like, you know, busted up bikes. I might have an image of it somewhere. Uh, I remember I had like a fort that was on the ground and I had like all these different bike parts. And so did my, you know, a lot of my friends did too. They all had bikes that were just kind of bits and pieces of stuff put together. Try to crank it down so that there's just a little bit of play. Let's go even it out a little too. It looks like we got more axle on one side than the other. Let's go spin this down till it 
bottoms out and then we'll back it off. Not great, but it feels good. There it goes. Alright. Go bolt this back to the bike and we'll see if we get a uh, adjuster. We'll start getting some of the uh, lumpiness out of this. Yeah, this might be a little cozy. So, this is a spoke adjuster and there's different sizes. Different spokes have different um, widths on the little channel that's on there. You see the friggin' numbers on it. So, we're gonna go spin it. And you just kind of find where it seems like right there touches. So I want to take the spoke opposite direction. And I'm going to try drawing on that to pull it the other direction. Let's go um, find what the, it's probably going to be the smallest one on here. This is, this is for like motorcycles and stuff too. Hopefully it goes down small enough for bicycles. There you go. Go give that a crank. I'm gonna go. I'll uh, leave that on there. I'm gonna go take a magic marker and bring it with us so we can kind of mark where we were. We'll mark it on the inside so that we can see what we got going on. The adjuster should still be on there. So we are right there. Let's go see if we make any difference. So it would have been right, about right there. And I'm going to go chase that from side to side. And I'm going to, I'll keep doing it, doing it, doing it on one side. I think I kind of probably maybe went too far with that one. So right here, it's touching. So I'm going to go. And hopefully, as we do that, we'll start getting it pulled in. Enough to where I'm gonna work on right there. Where I pull it over enough and then what we'll do is we'll skip over to the other side and we'll do the same on the other side. I gotta mark my, uh, gotta mark my tool. <laughs> it's like, I know which one it is. It's the smallest one. All oh, the jokes. Yeah, let's go. That spoke's loose anyway, way loose. Let's go give her a couple of. And we'll stick her them on there. I'm going to keep doing that and then like I said, I'll switch over to the other side. That one's a little really loose. Let's see how that one is. It's already getting better. And all I'll do is I'll go flip around I'll go to this side. Seems actually this side's got, I want to say, 70% of the way around. So this one's going to be these two drawn in, and if I have to, I'll back off on the one opposing it, that one. So these two are pulling the rim that way, this one, this spoke's going the other way, I know you can't see what they are. What, what they are. Well, it's that noise, oh. The fender bracket.
still where that valve is. A lot of times too, you could actually take the rim, like if you have to, if it's really bent, you could just kind of yank on the rim real hard, take it off and give it a whack. Cause it's got so much of a bend in it, you know? So right there, I'm gonna kind of back off on some cause you can see the rim's actually like ducking into the corner. I'm gonna back off on this spoke. This spoke's going this direction. Go. Hit that with a sharpie. So you just kind of know where we are. Seems like right there needs to go that direction and again you're looking from the side but this spoke is on is on that side of it so we're gonna get that a little tighten i'm gonna go check the two next to it seem fairly tight i'm gonna go back off on these two and i'm gonna keep playing this game back and forth yeah, wrong way i'm gonna play this game back and forth and i'm gonna try to get it as centered as possible and then i'm also gonna go take the spokes after I'm done, if there's any kind of looseness to them, I'm gonna take the spokes that are um, loose and I'll give them a little heads up. So I'll bring it back after doing this for a while and we'll see how good we can get it. That's a little bit of time. It is not perfect. I don't think it was perfect from the factory, but it's pretty good. Uh, let's go throw the tube and tire on there, put some air on it, see what we get. Might be changing some stuff up on this anyway, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. But the back is uh, where I really want to concentrate on. It's probably where it's worse, too. Let me go throw a tire and tube on that, put some air in it, see if it stays together. 20% thicker rubber. Thicker than what? Let's see, it doesn't have a, um, the inner liner. Comes with the tire tool, but not the inner liner. Go figure. How's the old one? Perfect. I don't know if we want to go to the recommended PSI. <laughs> Let's go to see if it'll. We're probably at like 10 right now. Let's go give it a spin. See that white wall? It kind of dips down a little. Sometimes you could fudge that a little bit. Let's go leave that like it is with the, the PSI that's in there. It's good enough to ride on it. And we want to jump on next. Maybe we take that back one off of there. Maybe we should um, check. You know, that's going to tuck that in. And uh, maybe we'll try to see if the gears work on it. We'll run that shifter and uh, give ourselves an assessment what we got in there. If we have to, we'll get into uh, taking that stuff apart and seeing if uh, we can cure it. Let's go pop in the sand. Let's go spin that. We well, say we try putting a little bit of air in that back tube. We got a new one anyway, but I think it's going to rub if we don't because it's just kind of flopping all over. I think the chances are on this. <laughs> We're gonna give it a 50 50 when we'll take it. Oh. I'll push it a lot, right? Let's um, try to run that shifter. It says third gear right now. It does not move at all. The shift is all frozen up. I think that cable's what's gonna be stuck. But we should be able to shift it. By pushing and pulling on this lever let's see if we get the cable off of it and we'll kind of shift it manually we'll see if the i'm going to just try to do an assessment on the wheel part of it let's see if we can get that to that cable is run kind of weird too you see it where it's up here it's right against the guard i don't know if that should have been maybe this bracket should be up higher up around here somewhere 
Nothing kind of weird to run it on the tin like that, right? Cables out of the game, we can kind of move it around. Yeah, so this has a rod that goes through inside the wheel and changes it. Let's go try it. Let me go back, get the hair. All right. So that feels like third gear. So that's slipping, that's not even in a gear. Go all the way out. This should, this should be first. Feels like second. Should let it go, should be third. All the way in. Yeah, and that's third. It's chalky though. Second, third. Got to hesitate in each one too. Seems like it's there. All right, let's go get that back tire off of there. We'll start looking into this stuff. I don't know. Um, I know that they're kind of like an oil bath on the inside of them. They have like a little fill cap. I think it just got like three in one oil at the time. I might take that reflector off too. Hey, let's get that wheel off of there. I got it unbolted. Oh, can... Kind of growly too. Yeah, this one definitely needs a lot of like, but you gotta remember too, the, the back wheels that took all the damage, every time you did a jump, you, you did your best to kind of put your, <laughs> you land on the rear so you didn't wipe out. And every time you did that, you kind of did a number on loosening up the spokes. You guys remember what these things were called? What was the name for them? I think it was after you uh, did the you did the uh, cards in your spokes. When I was a kid in school, you had to do a, uh, there you go. it was like show and tell. I, I forget what it was called. I don't know if we want to try these. It was, um, you had to do like some kind of exhibition in class. I don't know if that's the right word for it. Some kind of um, like presentation. That's probably the best way to call it. And I did a, uh, a bicycle, how, how to change a flat tire. Kind of like what we're doing right now. I'm on the bus, I bring like a, a tire and tube and everything in with me. And uh, get in front of the class. Proceeded to show how to, how to change a tire, how to patch a tire, that's what it was, how to, how to patch a tube. And this one's been uh, patched a few times, it's glued to the tire. How many patches do you think? I'm going to say four. Got one, two, three, four, and a compressor. Right on the money. <laughs> yeah, let's go get that uh, off of there. I'm going to go, maybe we'll gut this. We'll take a look on the inside of it, see what kind of condition it is. Maybe we'll get some lube up inside it. We'll see here, figure out how it works. Let's get rid of that reflector. I think it's just screwed on there. Yes. I think the idea though, so they were supposed to kind of stay in one place <laughs> as the bike is riding, but uh, most of the time they just kind of spun around the wheel. They never really kind of did that. 
What side do you want to open? That one? Or that one? Not sure how they come apart. I think, um... Yeah, let's get it. Let's go take it apart. You, you want to see how a three-speed rim works anyway, don't you? Let's go see if we can... Uh, like I said, I think there's a rod in here, and that rod is what I kind of adjust to different levels. There it is. Yeah, it's crusty anyway, with all the rust and crap that's coming out of there. How do we dissect that, though? I'm going to say it all comes apart on this side. I'm going to go spin some of these nuts off. I don't think it'll be, I'm going to go take a wire wheel, clean some of this crap off of here, and we'll, we'll spin everything off of here, and we'll look inside here. So the, the back room is metric. I wonder if that's, um, whole thing's turning. You're supposed to have a little tiny flat wrench that goes in there and locks the inner part of it. It's like a sheet metal wrench that went in there. Let's go see if I have anything that will work. Yeah, I can't get it from the other side. Let's go try. Lock on that side, we'll spin this side off. Figure the other, other side's the fatter end anyway, so it may all kind of drop out of that side. There you go. You can remember how this goes for me? We'll lay them upside down in a row, like that, that. Here's the race for the bearing, a spring. Yeah. We just lift everything right out of it. Parts go everywhere. Let's go see. It wants to go. No, I'm not going to hit it with a hammer. Back you up a little bit. It looks like there's a race right there. I don't know if it's part of the... Let's go get a uh, soft mount. I don't know if that race right there is like a, a spacer. And it's kind of jammed on that shaft. Let's go tap on that lightly, ever so lightly. Nope. I don't think that's threaded on there, though, do you? People who know how these go together are yelling at me right now. <laughs> I'm going to go shine a light in there. I wonder maybe, let's um, I'm gonna go clean that rod up on the threaded, on a wire wheel and we'll push that in. We'll see if that is kind of like locking anything together. Nah, it just bottoms out now. My guess is, it, you would think it has some kind of gearing on the other side of it. I don't know if this comes off. I'm gonna look under the scope a little bit with uh, a little bit of light and see if I could see anything that is holding us. You don't think we're supposed to take that off and the whole thing's supposed to go the other direction, do you? You're not answering me. So I looked in there, I could see like a, um, a roll pin on the other end, not allowing it to come out this way. So I think we have to come out. I think this side has to get disassembled. I stuck her in a the leather pads of the vise. I should get it. There we go. I didn't have a little wrench enough to go behind and separate these two. The vise worked. All right, we got that. that. Again, you better remember how all this went. Let me get this off of there. There we go. We're in there now. 
It's got little cogs on it. That lock into different. Um, that's probably the selection of the gears, which one it catches on. We lift that right off of there, you think? I can see like little, you can see like spider gears down in there. Let's get rid of the bearing. I don't know anything else. I'll look inside. Maybe we'll get a, a little, a little light. Here we go. Yeah, I see little tiny gears down low in there. There's three of them, like three, uh, like spider gears and then a main gear in the center. I see teeth on the outside here. And I don't know if we release this race. Yeah. How or what is holding that together? I keep picking away. I have a feeling that this maybe has to get spun out of there, maybe. Let's get out of the vice, see if we can lift it. I think the whole thing will come out now. And oh, we're committed now. I heard something go tink. Yeah, I don't know what holds that ratchet assembly in there, though. <laughs> Talk about digging a hole, huh? So looking from the other side, I can see a snap ring that is on that lower level. So my guess is that black cone would have to come off the other end, and we would um, go allow this half of the shell and the other half of the shell to separate, and it'll come out this direction. I don't know if I want to get into it that much further. I think... Probably our best bet is I'm going to go over to a parts washer. We'll wash it, get all the crud out of it. But it looks like we have the three different gears. I'm not sure which one's which, but we got one, two, and three. And the different paws that it catches on. It probably just uses each one to go spin on. My guess is when we put that rod, when that rod goes in there, here's the pins I was seeing that were in there. They're gummed up and, and gooey too. But I think the spring went over from the one side, pushed on them, kept tension on them. And then the rod selected which of these gears stood up and laid down and just caught different ones and each one was a different ratio. So I think it's how it kind of worked. Going with that. Which one's got the pin hole in it? Yeah, that one. So the rod went through here and pushed and allowed different, you indexed these, this pin up and down to select which ones of these stood up? Probably, I don't know, one, other, and maybe both is the shifting. Or one, the other, and, no, and none. Because there's only two selections in there. Probably, you know, one's just direct, one to one. Probably third gear is just one to one, maybe. So I'm going to go clean all that up. And we'll put that back together. Hopefully not lose anything. Earl it up. And uh, we'll get to dealing with this mess that's on here. <laughs> these are a tad loose. Kind of neat though. One thing definitely cleaned up, these paws, like two of them were stuck. It wouldn't even come out. These all the way around. That's probably what catches onto each one of those drive gears. They were all kind of screwed up. So the mud is out of there. The axle's cleaned up. These pins, I don't even want to call them those pins, wouldn't slide back and forth. They're all cleaned up. I'm going to go oil them up to our best to put them back together. Even these make a, a ratcheting sound now. Can I do it? Tell they got like catching detents. They do it right. You have to take my word for it. <laughs> they, if you, if you were to pick the wheel up and spin it now and hold them, you could hear it like do the tick, 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 tick sound that they weren't doing before. So, just needs some love, a little bit of cleaning. 55 year old grease. I'm not quite sure where I left off. Um, I was struggling a little bit. I ended up. Those, those four little paws that I showed, there's actually more in there. I took it further apart. There's a ring inside here that I had to go use a um, chain grips to kind of get around and open it up further in. But 
other than cleaning things, those four little paws on one side, the sp return springs were really messed up on it and they were kind of like down into the bore and they were rubbing on the axle. They got kind of like yanked out of their place. That's corrected. So we are kind of back together again. This pin in the center is what selects your three speeds. As you pull the cable, it just has a cam inside it. The more you pull on it, the more it pushes down on that pin. So right now we should be on high gear, which the rim will spin faster than the sprocket. I'm not sure it's gonna show. I should probably put a piece of tape. Let me put a piece of tape on that. There you go, just for demonstration purposes. All right, so I'll line my finger up with the tape, but as I spin it, you see how faster that tape has gone past it. If you go about halfway down, so you can do this right about there. Let me get it around. And I am going to grab it right there. It should be about the same speed. That should be one to one. So second gear is literally one to one. There's no change. And then if you push it all the way in, there we go. Now we should see my hand on the sprocket passing up the spokes and there's the ratio on it. <laughs> so it was a bit of a pain. I need to make myself a little tiny 15 millimeter wrench that can fit underneath there, be able to tighten that setup. I'm gonna go move ahead. I'm probably just gonna go and jump and do all the spoke tightening on this, try to get this a little bit more tightened up. Maybe we'll throw the tire on it. I wanna keep moving on the project. That was a, <laughs> that was a fiasco on its own. That could have been its own video. But uh, I had to stop filming and just kind of focus on what I was doing. Sometimes you just got to make your tools fit. It's 14 millimeter and too fat. I think it's still going to crunch down on it. Let's see what we get. As long as you can get it out of there. Good. Give a little bit of play. And for next time. We have a wrench built for it. Well, actually this rim is much better than the front one as far as being out of whack, but it's so loose. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go run around and give each one like half a turn. So that's why I put a piece of tape on it so I know where I started. And then I'm just gonna knock it out. I'm also gonna go probably mark this so I don't have to go chase it every time. I'm gonna go hit that with a, with a file right there or something, put, it in, put a notch in it. That was a full turn in every one of them. Let's see how we feel. It's actually pretty good. You gotta try to not get overzealous because if you go tighten up one side real tight, you're, you're uh, throwing off the other side. So that's why I just kind of went that way. Let's go see what we got for evenness now. Definitely got a kick to her now. So we're gonna just do the same that we did to the front wheel. We're gonna go find where those points are. I'm probably gonna set something up that I could use as a gauge. Right there is pulled too far to that side. So we're gonna go pull the other way. I'm gonna keep tightening on things too. Let's go a little extra there. I'm gonna leave the gauge right on it. Seems like this whole area has to get pulled over, so we're gonna hit all of those. 
I think you get the idea, right? So I'm going to go chase this for a little while and try to move all of these direction. And hopefully, I went the wrong way. <laughs> Gotta tighten it. Nope, nope, nope. Messing up. I don't know, know what I did. Anyway, you guys are making me nervous. So I'm going to go do that and do my best to get the bow out of it. Then we'll throw a tire on it. So I, I don't know, maybe five minutes on it, five, ten minutes. And we'll use the end of the uh, bench here as our, our guide. And there's maybe a sixteenth of an inch, if that. That's pretty good. And they're all tight now, too, so that should work for us. Let's go dig up a tube and a tire, and we need to get a little something for a band for this. So I was hoping I would have another, uh, what's it called, spoke protector, tube protector on a 20 inch, but I do not. So I have the universal one. What is the universal one, you ask? The universal one is tape. <laughs> Listen, tell me you haven't done it before. Get rid of that tape for the other tape. I'm gonna go run that around. Maybe, I don't know, maybe three times. Then we just gotta find where the hole is. Stop it. What is that nonsense? Find where the hole is and um, dig it out. Making a mess. One size fits all. Do you run out? That should do it. I'll get the exacto knife and go rock chair and poke her through. How about a pair of needle nose? And do it. So you gotta watch it. Uh, the material gets to be bunched up and the valve stem will have a hard time getting through it. But sometimes if you cut too much and it falls off. I'll go with that. I'm going to go try throwing that old tire back on there. We'll put air in it and we'll see what happens. We had one kid in our neighborhood. And our neighborhood wasn't like, um, I was in the country. It was essentially, there was three houses in a row. And then for about a half a mile, there was nothing. <laughs> uh, of course, those are the kids that you would hang out with due to uh, proximity. Well, he decided he was going to be a bike store. and But instead of selling you, like, this rim, he would take the rim totally apart, take the spokes out of it, and would sell, like, each individual tiny little piece. <laughs> it, essentially, it would just ruin bikes. Because nobody would want to go buy the little bits and pieces. They would want to go get, you know, I'm going to put a rim on my bike. I'm not going to go say, hey... How much do you want for the rim, the hub, the spokes, the caps, the tire, the tube? <laughs> I don't think he ever sold anything. I don't know what our chances are that this is going to take air and not blow up. The other one's still doing okay, the front one. Again, it's only got about 10 PSI in it right now. Let's go give that... Sometimes, too, you got to let them kind of like... You fill it up, you got to fill them up, deflate them a couple times because it'll get oval on you. Where's our air? Okay. I'm just going to look at that white wall that's going on. You can see where it's like, it's popping out here. So while it's got low air in it, I'm going to try to fudge it a little bit and center it. Who knows what it's doing on the other side, but let's go give her a little bit more. Let's give her a spin. We are. Let's see what the other side looks like. Fifty-five-year-old tire. <laughs> oh yeah, see, see where the valve stem is. That's why we're checking, see how it's bulging out of there. Sometimes you could just 
kind of feed it back in. If you were to just go fill that right up, that would have just popped right off the bead. I was at a um, motorcycle swap meet this past summer. And I'll show you the bike later. I, I built, it was out of parts, I don't know, I built it about five, six years ago. It's got an electric front hub. But before I left, I threw air in the tires. And uh, drops down right there. I threw air in the tires. I was riding, I was sitting still. People all over the place, sitting still. And um, the tire, like, whoop, pow, just let's go. Blow. The tube walked out just like you saw there. I guess I didn't catch it. I probably filled it up and the tire was on the ground, like the bike was sitting on the ground. And I caused that issue. Big flat spot right there. We'll let it sit with air for a little bit. It doesn't look terrible. You know, I'm looking at the, the double, what's supposed to be a red line. It's kind of okay. Let's go give her about another five PSI. Ooh, that's pushing it, huh? <laughs> Sounds good, though, huh? All right. What do you want to work on next? We got a new chain for it. We could probably just, I don't know if this one's got an air yeah, right there. It's got a master link. We can take that one off of there and then we'll, we'll feel how this feels. Maybe we'll pop this apart and uh, grease those. Sometimes they could fight you a little bit too. This one needs to come apart. That nut has to come across and this pedal has to come off to be able to get it apart to get those bearings out of there. Let me uh, get that chain off of there and we'll jump onto that. Look at that link. It doesn't even have the keeper on it. Just the just the two halves of it. Yeah. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have stayed together very good. Let's give her a spin. Yeah, they're kind of a little growly. Let's see if that pedal comes off. If the pedal comes off, we, we can get into it. That's gonna be the stopper of it. Sometimes they could be a little tight. There's like a, a flat spot right here on the pedals. There's a left and a right too. There's usually like on this side of them, they, they'll be stamped in them. Let's see if you can see them on this one. I'm not sure if it is. So um, I think it's the left pedal turns counterclockwise to tight. It's not righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's lefty tighty righty. I don't know. <laughs> it's opposite. So that when you're pedaling, it doesn't want to undo itself. Yeah, so normally you would you can get on there. Where's the flats? Where's the flats? So normally you would tighten it this way and loosen it this way, but it should be the opposite. It should be that. There you go. You would think you would be tightening it down, but you're not. It's loosening it up. Now that's not true on the other side. The other side is normal. So you got left-handed threads. And a lot of times, like I said, the pedal, it'll be stamped in the base of the pedal. We'll get this one off. We'll take a look. I don't know if it's showing up. Yeah. You see the L right inside there? And while they're off, we're going to throw some lube in those. But let's get ahead of ourselves. Let's go get this off right here, and we'll get the crank out of it. I wonder if we should uh, take that chain guard off. I kind of want to clean it up a little bit anyway. Let me get some of the rust off of it. It's going to be fighting us a little. So we got holding that one there and one right there. Yeah, get the, let's get the guard off. Get some dents out of it too. Our faux exhaust system. See, when I was a kid, the exhaust system was taking the cards and we take close spins. And you would put clothespins on, say, like the sissy bar or the front forks. And the cards would go between. The faster you went, the more it made the noise. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, famous cards were ruined. <laughs> Turn into that. There, right, get that out of there. I can use a little bit of love. But let's go get the uh, front sprocket off. Sometimes, too, if you're not sure which way it goes, a trick you can do is take your fingernail, you don't know which way this unthreads, take your fingernail and run it 
And of course, if your fingernail jams or doesn't jam, it gives you an indication of which way the thread's going. So if this was regular right-handed thread. If I keep spinning my nail this way, it should jam up at the end of the thread. Again, same thing. Left-handed thread so that it didn't loosen up while you were pedaling it. Now that should be like a little keeper with a tab on it. You need a little pick or something to get that out of there. I'll just have a little keeper right there to keep it from spinning. Damn it. And that kind of packs that and then there'll be another nut. They used what's called a, a spanner wrench, but that really shouldn't be tight. There you go. I'm going the wrong way, I'm going tight. So that should spin right out of there, and I'll have a taper for the bearings. I'm going to go shoot some oil inside here and blow some of that crap out. Usually what you use is what's called a spanner wrench. Let's see how this works out for us. And sometimes these balls will either be in the cage or, or they can be, lo be loose. I'm gonna find out in a second. They start puking on the floor. <laughs> Just gotta watch where they go. That's kind of a pain in the ass and you gotta go chase them. I think it's got a cage though. Yeah, it does. And you can see why I had to take the pedal off. There'll be sometimes it, the, you won't even be able to get this assembly out of there. Sometimes you got to take one of the races out. Let's go find out on this one. And so that's got to come off. And get the bearing to pop out of there because you need the room to make the, the turn. There you go. Now we sh should have enough to make it. Like I said, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes you gotta take the race, tap one of the races off. Get the bearing out of the other side started. That one's the cruddy one. You can feel the dirt coming out of it. There we go, got it. Yeah, that bearing was really packed with like mud. So I'm gonna take a few minutes, I'm gonna go clean this up. I'm gonna go clean those races up. Probably gonna, you know, so we do about polishing up that sprocket. I'll shoot a little bit of oil down on the inside of the pedals. Hear them growling. Sometimes they can use some tightening up too. If they loosen up, you could uh, peen over the edges. I think we're all right. I can see the difference between the two of them. This one's much more wet with grease and this one's just packed. This is the one that was on the other side. I know it's because the chain that's going around is it have more dirt get into it. And the bearings are clean. I'm just gonna get the races. The same. I flipped it around the stand, it's a little easier to work with. See how cruddy this grease is though. And you can't even peel it off. Try different like acetone and all. We think about working on bikes being a kid. I think it's a great learning tool because you kind of learn all the how things go together, how things break, what uh, uh, what gear ratios do, uh, cabling, shifting, you know, brakes. Everybody tries like different things. Like, hey, well, if it breaks on the rim, how many of you tried uh, making your brake pads rub on the tire? <laughs> so, uh, that might work better. You find out it wears out the side of the tire. <laughs> I would see everything that uh, you're working with too. Like I wouldn't exactly say it. Say I had tools to work with. It was pretty much. Um, would you have vice grips, a hammer? 
I don't remember a socket set. We had like, my dad, my parents, I should say. Santa, I should say. Grab me a set of wrenches. Now I'm, I'm probably 10 years old also. Around right the same time. Maybe even younger. My dad gave me like a little set of tools, like bicycle repair tools. One of them was like a, it was like a eight in one wrench. It looked like it had two acorns on each end and, and each side of the acorn had like four different wrench sizes or five because I think even on the tips it had it. The uh, first time I, I think I put it on something, I tried to break a wheel loose. I think it was made out of aluminum. It just kind of shattered on me. Kind of like a play school set of tools. But again, that's how you learn, right? Thanks for a good education. I think a lot of people are missing out on this kind of stuff growing up now. Here I am. I'm the old man telling those stories. When back in my day. <laughs> right, so I'm going to go clean up both of those sides. We'll grease up them bearings. We'll put that crank back in there. I'm going to throw some oil. On the, actually, I'm going to detail, rather, the uh, chrome on it. We'll throw that back in. I'm going to grease up the bearings, too, but let's... Uh, Throw some booger snot in that side and the other side. This stuff didn't really hold up very well in these, this area too because there's there no seal. So, I would say definitely wasn't the first time I would ride my bike into a lake. <laughs> Let's, uh, I gotta go grease these two, two guys up. They definitely look a lot better going back in. Well, they came out. We may have to go kick them to the side anyway because of the like what we talked about. So. <laughs> what side was it on? <laughs> Look like that? Or the other way around? Now that I flipped the bike over, I think it was like I gotta move it anyway. I'm not gonna have enough clearance from the clamp. Well, the bracket for the chain car kind of gives it away, doesn't it? Alright, let's go wiggle that back in there. Let me, let me kick the bearing out for a second. Yeah, so, this is better just to kind of get it right out of there on both sides. Feed it through. Then you just plop in. And we'll put the race, the inner race on this side. Reverse thread. And I'm going to run that in till. Damn it. Just like you have a little bit of play. The wheels are the same way too. You don't want to crank down on it. You have to have a, a little bit of wiggle room in it. That's true. Even like a, say front wheel bearings on a car. Not the modern stuff, but the, you know, anything with a tapered bearing. You have a little bit of play in it. I'll show you in a second. Stands in a way. I'm going to run it until it's tight and kind of back it off just a hair. Just you want a little bit. I don't know if you can hear it. Just a hair of moon. A hair of movement. And then that ring goes back on. Probably be better if I show you from the other side, huh? I heard you. So this will have that little keeper in it. And that's going to line up with that groove. And that just allows it so that one is a dust cover, but when you put the bolt back on it, when you go to tighten this one up, it doesn't want to turn the inner one. So it keeps your, your setting. Is the best way to say it? Wheel bearings are the same on the front. Like if we're talking about cars, same thing on a wheel bearing on a car. Sometimes they have a little tab that you bend over to lock it also. But... No matter what, when I go to crank on that, it won't tighten the inner. You're just running up against each other. Let's go get the uh, pedal back on it. We'll give her some spins and we'll see how she sounds.
There you go. Yeah. It's not growling anymore. I wouldn't exactly say it's it's race ready. <laughs> For another 55 years though, that resets in there. All right, I'm gonna go shoot a little bit of oil down the other pedal. I should have did it while it was off. I could have got a better angle on it. A lot of times the, the cranks get bent too. Every kid, you're on a bike and you're jumping. And all your weights on your pedals. Jumping over your friends. Piece of plywood and a couple of cinder blocks. <laughs> Never done that before. All right, let's. Um, what's your thoughts? What do you want to go pick on next? We can. Um, maybe we'll pop those fenders off. I'll detail them while they are off and before we put the tires back on. Maybe we get that sissy bar to kind of deal with. We got cables to deal with. But we'll go shopping upstairs. See if anything maybe a little bit better than what's on here. Then we got to get into that shifter. But, oh, that's all frozen. That cable's frozen up. Actually, let's go, uh, you still have that chain guard to do. See if we can get some of those bends out of there. That's the best way to kind of go approach that. You want to clean it first and then take the dents out, or vice versa? I don't know about this side. It's like it's tore out up in a corner, too. What if it was like that? No, nah, it can't be like that. We'll beat that back in the submission. Let's, um,. Go lay it on some rags or something, and we'll kind of beat it back into submission after I clean it. <laughs> you see, we try squishing it in the vise with a big bend. Got to kind of need to come behind it, and let's go. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to. There's little edges on all these. I'm going to try not to fold them over. Work with the gap. I'm saying this is, it's kind of like a, uh, a cheese grater. They're stepped in. Dents in it either. Kind of probably wouldn't hurt to put it on a bag, maybe, right? It's actually soft enough so we can, we can mold it with our fingers. Hammer that one out, or kind of like it's stretched. Let's go give her a persuasion in one area. I also want to do it without beating the crap out of. The, I don't know if this is chrome, shiny metal. So I'm going to pick away more at that. You can still see it's got a bunch of waviness. Right in the center right there. Looks like the gap's actually kind of closed down a little. Yeah, it's got a twist to it. I'll pick it away. I'll pick a weight at it. Yeah, that's what we'll do. I think that's supposed to be straight. <laughs> See how it would make out. Well, I think we're going to live with that because any more I mess with it, I'm just going to start stre uh, stretching stuff out. We got that little dip still right there. But the more I tried working it, it, it was, in my opinion, I'm just kind of making more little tiny dents in it. So. Better off leaving well enough alone. You can see the little hoonanny that, that's in it. That's what I was trying to work out. But you, you fix one and then the other one gets worse. So I think that's probably the where we want to keep the better look of it. 
All right, uh, I don't know if we want to throw that on or maybe we'll just kind of keep picking away at you know, yank those fenders off of there. And the sissy bar in the seat. Might as well. I'm going to go take a few minutes. I'm going to go strip the rest of the junk off of it. It's all going to get cleaned up anyway, like the handlebars. And you know, start reassembling it. That, that's not good. <laughs> Those bearings are beat too, so we got to open that up anyhow. So I can go strip some stuff off. I'll bring you back. We'll get into here. Well, although I do like the patina look, I'm possibly going to try to clean these up a little bit on the insides. We'll polish the outside, but let's go see if uh, a little bit of... <laughs> I won't tell if you don't. This kind of hides it. When the tire's there, you're not going to really see much of it anyway. But I think that kind of looks possibly a little better. I hated that when I was a kid. There was, there was like one can. I bet you had like lead in it or something because I never found it since, but it looked really good. And I'm just go polish the outside of that and uh, after that dries. Well, the next maintenance thing that we showed earlier was the forks. <laughs> it really should um, kind of just want to flop to the side, not, not do this. Um, lock in one place kind of thing. So the way the handlebar neck comes off, it's got a bolt in the center. You would think you take the bolt all the way out. You don't. You, you back it off, I don't know, that far, three eighths of an inch or something. And there's a wedge down below. So you gotta knock the wedge loose. So you would whack it with a hammer. And that should allow it, might even give it a little bit more. It allows the wedge to back off. A lot of times rust builds up in there too, but Let's go Maybe a little more. And we'll wiggle a little part. I still have a cable connecting it, but there you go. There's the wedge I was talking about. So that's what you're doing. You're, you're unloosening that wedge. You, when you're hitting it with a hammer, it's jammed up inside there. You hit it with a hammer and it, it pops forward and it loosens itself up. So it's like a spider's been living in there. Let's get this off of here. This is kind of like the same as like the crank down below. It's got a jam nut on top, a ring with a clip in it, and then the race down below. Let's go get that off. And a set of bearings and you know. It's, uh, I'm gonna have to stick a two by four in there. Let's go with a hammer handle. remember too these bicycles were meant to last a couple of years and you threw them away so here we are 55 years later these were considered like the cheap bikes like the huffy you know schwinn was probably for muscle bikes schwinn uh ross i think was uh one of the other better ones we gotta get something screwdriver something behind that funny part is now is like you compare this bike to some of the the store bought, like this would have been, you know, maybe Sears, JC Penny, bike sold. But if you compare it to like a bike now, the, the quality is so much better. <laughs> All right, I gotta get that ring off of there. I gotta see on the other side. That's the reason why that one is not coming out. Get the focus right on it. So here's that tab that I told you about where it's supposed to be locked into on the collar, but the little nipple is over here. It rotated around to the side so that's why this ring isn't coming off like it should i'm gonna try uh, maybe i'll pair of pliers i'll try to rotate that back to where it was and it should be able to work its way off of there Let's see if i can get under it it's gonna be all jammed though that's the problem i gotta get it away a little bit just so i can get the pliers on it There we go. 
going to have to hold on to them. And then that whole collar has to get rotated out of there. It's going to booger up on me. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a wire wheel. I'm going to go clean the surface up real quick just so that can spin off of there without trying to go over the crap that's on it. Those threads might be chewed up a little bit there too from the um, with that collar slipped. It's going. There we go. Yeah, I suspect it's going to look. This one even gets worse sometimes too because the way it sits standing up, water gets straight in them. There we go. Get that off of there. And we're going to have again a bearing on each side. Let me go put these down. And just the bearing in a race. Yeah, they're gummed up. Sometimes too, I've taken them, I've flipped them, I put the bottom on the top, top on the bottom. Most of the energy is uh, pushing upward, so you want the better one on the bottom. I'm gonna take some a moment, go clean them up, go clean these up. These are pretty much locked up. How's that surface? I think it's pitted. I think it's just got a lot of crap on it. Like the, you pop them right out. I guess sometimes you can take them, you can flip them around. I'll take them over to wire wheel. Just go clean all the petrified grease out of them. <laughs> Repack them, and we'll put that back together. Before and after. So we put the better one on the bottom. That, that was a little growly. Greased up. I'm gonna run them down to it, kind of like seats itself. Is that one bad spot where it's fun? Where it seats itself and then back up a hair. Just kind of want to, you want to feel the fork have, let's get it right about there. It's got a hair play in it. Let's seat them a little bit. And back it off of here. That's good. I'm just trying to stay away from the plate that's in it. And hopefully that ring doesn't turn on us this time. I hit it with a hammer and kind of laid it out flat. Sometimes people think that, that this nuts the adjustment, so they crank down real hard on it. And it's not doing anything. There's a reason why there's no teeth on this one. You're supposed to do it with your fingers, you know. Just watching out washer. That feels better. It doesn't have to be, you know, bearing smooth like um, the crank is. But you don't want it going. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm going to take some time. Let me go clean some stuff up, clean up handlebars and all. Uh, polish those fenders out, get them back on, and start moving us along. I want to, uh, probably the last thing we're going to have to do is like cabling and seats, but let me get us up to that point. Let's go put a new chain on it. I am going to put a new chain on it, but line them up next to each other. You can see that we are barrel to barrel here as we start getting along. And about a foot down, they're not quite the same. Shifting, 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 we lose a whole link. This chain is stretched out 
a whole extra link over the other one that's there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this chain on there. I was just going to go break it, which would be this link right here, which it still may be. But I'm going to go put it on there, make sure I'm just not going to be too short. I'll be in the window to kind of work with. We got it strung up on there. You can kind of see. You. Definitely have a bunch of room. Plus, we, the sissy bar kind of gets in the way, so you do want it a little on the forward side. And the sissy bar goes right in that side of it. So we want to punch out that link right there, and then a master link can go from there to there. Get your tool on there. So we're just gonna push out one of the pins, preferably that back one right there. So see, that's what that tool does. Thread it back a little. So that's just gonna go grab the other side of the uh, tooth sprocket. <laughs> I call it link. Yeah, we'll go with link. And hopefully, enough bite that we're able to push the pin out. If it slips off, we can um, grab it from the other side. But let's go see how this does. This chain's kind of thin. This is meant for like a. Yeah, we're slipping off. I'm gonna back it all the way out. Come from the other side. Hold it on the other side of him. Yeah, man. Give me some room. That'd be a bicycle one. It'd be much smaller. This doesn't have much room between the, um, I'm going to call it the camp, all the roller. It really doesn't help. I'm trying to do it on in the air on a bicycle in front of a camera. Any more excuses? <laughs> I just gotta get over that pin. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to do this on a vice. I'm stubborn. There we go. There we go. Either went or broke. <laughs> Gonna pop it out and see what we got. Yeah, the pin's pushed out. Come on. You can see how it worked that pin out of there. And then you can take the link that's on this side with a pair of pliers. I'm just gonna bend that down to the side and slide it off. And I'll be using the master link to pull this around. I don't know. If we did it right, we should have a tooth in between. And that's where our master link goes in between of those two. Stay. side on and then the clip you want it going in the direction of we're spinning this way we don't want it to be able to get clipped onto something and get knocked off I kind of do it like that push that side already on and then slip the other end over instead of trying to shove it on like that and then be all chain. All right, not quite sure where I left off. It is the next day. I do believe we have everything kind of good as far as the drivetrain components. Let's go get it to shift. The shifter is frozen. There it goes. 
was frozen solid. I think we have to go free stuff up though. Let's go see what it takes to get that apart. We'll see if we can get maybe the cable out of it and or put a new one or free it up and get it to operate and shift the gears and then we'll go on to the brakes. I remember having a, you would try to like tie it in one gear. <laughs> it's probably a second when stuff would fail. Not. I think that's 10 millimeter or 7 16 Let's go with a 7 16 Wrong. So you spoke up louder. Probably not a 10 either. The back there too, it's kind of close to the um, the exhaust system. <laughs> Let's go see what makes it that click. Let's see what makes that not click. Probably a better way to say it. Mm. Looks like it's kind of pressed together. That cable is really frayed. You want to see? It's definitely on its way out. Yeah, I like to see how we take it apart anyway. Yeah, it's got a bunch of fraying going on. Right there. So how do we open that? Kind of looks like it's pressed together, huh? Let's go shift it. So it shows the most cable. Can we just wiggle that right out of there? What holds that? I'm going to do a little bit of exploring. Yeah, it's ready to fail. There's not, it's got like two or three strands left on it. Let's, uh, Take a second and contemplate. I was, I was hoping that was going to be like a bolt on the inside of it that took it apart. My guess is we've got to get that plastic housing off on the other side. Would it, it, sh it shift it all the way up here? You can, you can see the barrel. Right there is the barrel. It doesn't look like there's en enough room to lift out of there though. Tell me how bad the cable is. Done. Uh, can we? I was thinking, like, do we? That's got to be able to come out of there. <laughs> I'm back on this side. I just don't want to trash it. There we go. It looks like it wants to lift up. There you go. Told you it was in there. Wouldn't listen to me. Take that below. We get a better fit in screwdriver. It's one thin slot. Hmm. I don't think I have a much skinnier than that. Problem is, you dare start downsizing screwdrivers. The speed, go, the blade going across. Let's go try this one first. Yeah, that Springs and stuff are gonna fly everywhere. Probably could have done this on the without taking it off. Now we know. And plastic cover come off. We're in. There we go. So now we should be able to. Unthread that. Huh. 
There's gotta be a, all the pieces come off. That's how it works. Remember how they go? You better. That's a little. Uh, we're gonna lose the ball right there. That's what um, makes the indentation. Let's get that. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? You knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I may have lost that. Gotta go hunt for it. All right, we're in. Kinda. You know, look for my balls. I hate when I lose my balls. Uh -huh. So I don't know how this is gonna work because it has a little barrel on that end. I don't know how we're gonna be able to take that off. So it's got an end on both sides. Hmm. So I'm guessing we're gonna have to go crimp one. Let's go get the, we'll take the cable all the way off just for now. This one should be a spring loaded one. This should probably go up higher anyway. That didn't quite look, look down there. That didn't like, seem like it was kind of fitting correct. Let's go get that apart. I wonder if I have another bike maybe with a cable that's already made up. I guess the worst case scenario, we can maybe like, do a, a solder blob on the end of one of them. All right. So we need to make, and it's right on that end too. One of these cables, oof. Or at least find one of them. All right, we got an end on that side. And on there, you can't pull the guts out of it. We, we're gonna need the spring set up. If this was gone, we can assemble it all and possibly maybe like we'll dip it in a, a thing of solder or something to make it. Let's go shopping and see what I can go find first. These little bike kits that you get from Walmart. But they, so that would be like the one end, right? The tiny end and then the other end would be the barrel. But again, we still have to get this, like, we need that. You know, possibly you can get the spring off of there, but you're not going to get the adjuster out of there. Yeah. I think we're going to end up having to, to make uh, what we need. I don't see anything in there with that little end on there, right? I guess three-speed bikes are not a thing anymore. <laughs> You'll see if there's a three-speed upstairs that may have that cable. To the land of junk bikes. So this would have had the shifter on it, this style. But that cable's gonna be, there's not even one there. But I'll have to say, if there's one on there, it's gonna be like nine miles long though. That's a three speed. Same scenario, that, that cable's gonna be ridiculously long. All right, so I think we're off to trying to re-sleeve the one that's there and make an end for it. All right, so let's go cut off a little nipple piece. And I think maybe we'll add like an inch of cable to it so that we can move this assembly a little further back where it's not resting on that chain guard. That. If this if this body is good, we will use that over. Yeah, watch it doesn't stab me. All right, so we need a piece of cable. One end, I'm sure we could find, it has that look to it. And then we got to make it a little bit longer and add an end to that side. Let's go shopping inside this pile here. I 
we want a barrel the size of that one, right? Too big. No. That one's got it right there. That's the same size. Let's go open this one up and we'll cut it. Too bad it's got the other barrel on the other end that we need. But I don't want to make the cable ridiculously 10 feet long. Yeah, so this is the end that we are not going to use. Yeah. Back a little further. We can slide this cable right out of it. And we need to make one that long. Like we said, we'll add maybe that much to it. Measure twice, cut once. Let's go see what we got. Okay. So we'll go right about there. Probably should have, uh, probably should have soldered it first. Didn't open up. That's good. All right. So let's, uh, shoot some oil in this jacket here. We'll some air through it and shoot some oil in it. We'll put all the pieces back together. And we'll try soldering on the end of that. I'm gonna shoot air through that. See if it blows out any dust cobwebs. Oh yeah. <laughs> that go. Shoot some oil in there. So I'm going to go do that again and uh, we'll shove that cable in there. So when we cut, right? Oh, we got to assemble it first, huh? So <laughs> let's go get this. This has got a bunch of crap stuck in it. Bunch of cruddy. bristles that were left over. All right, so the new cable, wherever it ended up. This was the upper side, right? That's the side that gets the barrel. This end, this has to go on. Getting it all oily, that's not good. Doesn't look right, does it? Right, because nothing touched that. And that was on that end. So let's um, clean up the end of that and we'll get like a little pot of solder heated up and we'll, we'll try dipping the wire in it, see if we can build up a little bit of an end on it.
think that's enough? Let's go one more. I'm gonna learn the trick to it. Gotta be fast. So that's gotta be able to fit through there, right? Yeah. Call that for the win? <laughs> Don't lean against that, it's hot. Not sure on that bend. I don't believe that was supposed to be there. I'm maybe screwing it up. I don't know. See if we can get that to come out of there. You know, that took... That was somebody's testicle. That's that's why they got out, outlawed, too. Because of that, you'd slip off the handlebars and whack yourself right in the nads. I'm going to go clean it up. I think, actually, the ball bearing split was supposed to sit in this one and then click into the other three. Not vice versa. Hence, probably why it was kind of wimpy. <laughs> Screw the main chassis to the body just so that um, it holds things in place. Like that, that. Like I said, the, the one check ball I think stays in that location. And we got to wrap cable like that. We need that. <laughs> Watch it doesn't fit. Okay, I don't know. Don't be a dick. I was only kidding. Ah, oh, you suck. I will hit you with a hammer. I'm going to take a drill bit and clean the edge up a little bit. just doesn't want to quite drop in. That should go. <laughs> I keep willing it. Yeah, I'm going to open that up just a hair with a drill bit. Get rid of a burr. I don't know if I want to try filing on that. It's kind of tiny. So I had to hit it with a punch and a hammer. Knock it into the center. Loser balls. No balls have been lost. Do we have that correct or are we 180 out? Does not seem right. I got something wrong. Here's your problem. I heard you. I heard you. Oh, yeah. Little bushings in there. Like that. Actually, I wonder if that bushing's supposed to be on the outside. I bet you it is. I don't remember when we took it apart. It's a little brass one. seems like it's got a little too much play. I'm not opposed to shoving something else in there neither though. All right, because that's going to have, it's not, it needs something to hold up against that detent more than what it is. Hmm. I'm going to look, see if I dropped anything. I, I don't think so. Then again, who knows who took this apart in the past. Actually, you're forgetting the cover. There's your problem. I heard you. I heard you. Calm down. All right. There's too much room. And on that, I'd have to have to cut out. It must, does that pivot with it, right? Yeah, like that. There you go. Now it's everything's taking up all the room. And then a the little black plastic piece goes in the center of that. You guys got it easy. You're just sitting there watching. Okay. Let's go feeling it. 
working all the way in. And we can, yeah, it kind of sucks that it doesn't, it still has too much play in it. That'd be a way to, yeah. I'm gonna get a spacer to fill that gap. And then I, I think the detent will do better. Let me go tighten up the body of it. Yeah, I gotta get something else to go take a little bit more of the play out of it. Make a look at it, make sure I have the right pattern. But we're close. Yeah, I made a shim to take up some of the space in there. Now you get a good, that's what we're supposed to have. I don't know if it just wore out over time or uh, maybe somebody took it apart over the past and had an issue. So she does what she's supposed to be doing. She's the back wheel. I do have one issue I'll show you in a second. So that's first gear. Second gear. And third gear. Second. First. Second. Third. So the issue is, because I linked in that cable, I, I didn't like the fact that it was right up against the, the guard there. It was kind of smashing into it and rubbing right on the body. Not that it's not still, but it, at least it has a little bit more room before it was like really, see where the rust was puking out, digging in. So I added an inch to it to try to get the bracket up higher, but now we're at where the brake is and you know, that has to go down in that area. So I think I might do, I'm gonna take this bracket off and I'll spin it around. I'll spin it so it sits right here and it should clear it for us, hopefully, <laughs> find out. That worked out pretty good. Spin around now, we've got plenty of room. Plus, the, yeah, all the adjustments back. I can go up higher if I even need to, but so that's third, second, third, or let's try that one more time. All right, we are in first. Get stopped for a second, second, and third. Awesome. Done. Let's um, screw around with brakes. I think it's just gonna be more of the same. I'm just gonna go change out some cables and align them into the proper area. I don't know if they're all smashed in or bent up. So I'm gonna take a little time and pick away at those. Probably not gonna go film it. I don't think that's gonna, you got the idea with this one, right? So we're just gonna do the same. I may actually run that adjuster in a little bit and run that up just a hair so that if we have to, we have a little bit of tweak room right now. I'm, yeah, I'll set it up so it's right about there gives us some rideability adjustment and we'll take some of the play out of the cable good Let's get this thing done see how chalky this one is to come out of the vise <laughs> i'm gonna do the same thing i use that cable over the jacket rather original jacket over but fortunately this one we don't have to make an end for it it just uses a um, little barrel nut that tightens down on it so we can just go cut off an end and put a new cable on it heat's on it's winter forgot somebody sent me a cable cutter that makes life a lot easier I'm gonna go take the cable out of that jacket put in the original white one and go pick that up well, I can see the brake pads. I even put a different set on them that I had upstairs, but they're pretty much petrified. But, kind of work. <laughs> I think the front's actually a little better. Those were the ones that were on it. But, keep an eye out for that. I'm trying to keep, you know, as you work on something, how you would uh, have for an end product. I'm thinking more trying to keep the bike as original as possible. Uh, having said that, I think we are off to the last item, which is the seat. It's kind of cool what is on there with that two-tone white, but it's, it's like pretty much petrified. You know, there's not much of a, a seat, so-called being a seat. Sissy bar, I think we can probably clean up, get most of the rust off of it. Does not look totally wasted. It has gone over a few times though. <laughs> <laughs> There's the tell right there. Let's go upstairs. We can do a little bit of shopping. See if we can find, see if we can find a seat that uh, might be a little bit more fitting to our our ass. <laughs> it might hold up a little better because the thing is, I think if we just ride it a little bit. It's just gonna fall apart. Let's go shopping. Like, remember, I have a bunch of other crap still at the house. This is just a pile that I brought over when we were uh, building something else. I've got sissy bars. There's one. 
that's a sissy bar. Holy. Here's another one. Want to put a springer front end on it? Yeah, we'll save that for something else. We got two sissy bars. That one looks like, where's the hole up top? Actually doesn't have any. This is the one that would use the bracket. What about this one? Yeah, these would use, I don't have them. They're just like little brackets that would grab around it for the back of the seat. I think that one is using holes that are in it. So those are kind of, unless it's in here. It's part of that Springer front end maybe. Yeah, let's go look um, just for a seat. That. That's kind of a cool seat, not the mountain bike in front of it. That. That's like an old, that might be like an old Ross. I don't know if I want to take that one apart. It's got a five speed. I think it's five, five, it's five or three. That's the three speed that like we just worked on, but it's missing all the guts. What does that say? Yeah, chopper. Yeah, we'll leave this one alone. That might be for another day. That's kind of ugly. I thought we saw one. We we're picking away at something else. Like maybe the uh, dune buggy. I thought we saw a seat back in here somewhere. It's like a gold color, maybe. Some stuff we could put on it. Put a radio on it. <laughs> that's, that's probably period correct for that too. Yeah, I thought there was a seat back here. I know there's a seat here, somewhere. Maybe on the other side. I'll bring you back when I find it. There's a box of these of the older style ones. Definitely don't want any of that. Getting warmer. Another Springer front end. Should put that with the other one for future reference. Is my memory failing me? Whoops. That's what I'm thinking of right there. It's on a girl's Schwinn, which is an all original. Somebody was actually throwing this one out. It was in a free pile. Again, the three-speed missing the cable setup. <laughs> so you start riding it around in third gear and you get tired. I think we're going to leave that one alone too. I don't want to break that one up. It seems like it's all original stuff. Ha! It was over here. Not that. That's, a, that's for a big sissy bar. That's what I was thinking of. Looks like the front's blown out of it. Let's go bring that down. Maybe we can uh, possibly use that. Hey, what's your opinion? You want to go back with that? Which in a way I kind of like. With that. I think this looked better in my mind. <laughs> Maybe kind of visual it on there. There's no other kind of gold or anything that goes with it. Let's do our best just to clean this up. And then we'll kind of keep it original. We'll clean some of that rust off and uh, hope for the best, see if it stays together. Yeah. yeah that, that's the one, don't you think? Don't you agree? Well, other than a wipe down, that seat's on there. Maybe we'll get into the. This can't go on the back because it's got that little oil cap in it, so that's what it was getting hung up on. Let's try it in the front. I have a feeling it's still going to get uh, in the way. It's kind of long, you know. I don't know if somebody added this from another bike. Generally, with the hub, you know, the hub's that diameter. Before we can put a screw on it, will that work? <laughs> that may be a waste of time. Should look at pictures, see if it's on the uh, on an original. Yeah, that's gonna hang down too far in the spokes. Just get caught up. Uh, 
<laughs> so no. <laughs> kind of sounds like the spokes. The card's in the spokes, doesn't it? All right, we'll get rid of that. I'm going to go wipe the frame down and we'll do a little grand finale. We got to say it came out pretty nice. There's the seat all cleaned up. We really didn't put much into it as far as, you know, extra stuff. It's nice. It kind of stayed original. I have a kind of a, a fancy for that. You know, I don't want to make everything brand new. I want them to look their age again. This 55 years old, original tires and <laughs> still holding there. I bumped them up a little bit. I went up to like uh, 30 pounds roughly on each one, just so it's a correct what it should be. I kicked the handlebars up a little bit so that I fit my carcass on it decently. Yeah, the chrome's a little beat up on that sissy bar, but yeah, I knocked the rust off of it. Looks fine from 10 feet away. Rims are nice and trued up. Brakes work, could probably use a set of brake pads. Other than that, everything really kind of came back really nice. 1968 Huffy Dragster 3. I wonder if the three was for the three speed. Not sure. I left the sticker on there, the 1970 decal. I don't know if they, you know, had to register a bicycle. Sometimes some cities had that. Well, I grew up in a country, you didn't do any of that nonsense. But looks good. I like it. Let's go take it for a putt. It's dark outside, but let's go kind of cruising around here. Just going to run it through the gears, see what it does. plywood and I could jump over you. <laughs> Neat. What do you think about not having a high sissy bar? You don't break your neck trying to get off of it. Well because I think we're getting to the point of the video where we've done what we can do. Can't do no more. Came out really nice. I like it. I was talking about that electric bike that I built. That's this one right over here. And this is all just bits and pieces. People think I had one just like that when I was a kid or I had that bike when I was a kid. No, you didn't because <laughs> I made it out of a bunch of different stuff. It's an old Columbia frame. I put a Springer front end on it and this one's got a little bit of a, a secret to it, a little bit of a specialty that's uh, different than other stuff. And that is the fact that it's front wheel drive electric. The battery's in that bag that's in the back there. Kind of hidden away. It really cruises pretty good. Probably does eh, 20 miles an hour with about a 20 mile range. And uh, I, again, kind of, you know, that's an original one. And this is what I was thinking in my head when I was trying to build this one together, which is like the old Schwinn's had the, um, like the orange crate and the, uh, or apple crate and uh, all the funky names on them. They had a little 16 inch wheel on the front with a brake drum. And I saw that was a, uh, a back wheel from a fold up electric bike. I said, oh, that would look just like the front wheel on one of those bikes. So, hence, that's what got built. All right, guys. Well, I enjoyed myself. I hope you did, too. You know, you want to put a little uh, stories down below of you growing up and the stuff that you guys got into and share with me. I'd really appreciate that, too. But, again, Christmas 1968, a little bit before my time, but not far. You know, there's probably a couple of years difference I would have been in that same genre. I was 68. I was four years old. So, about eight years old, 72, is when uh, we were trying to ride this stuff. <laughs> you know, so maybe riding around with like a Corvette with side pipes on it, and you were a little kid, and you're like, you wanted that version of it as a bicycle, and that's what you got. The Huffy Dragster, 1968. All right, guys, I'm mumbling. Thanks for hanging out with me. 
we'll get, do it again sometime soon. Till then, later. Oh, you sexy thing.